Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So Home Depot management just made a statement, which is actually probably good news for Whirlpool investors. That's what I want to talk about today. All right guys, so Whirlpool's earnings are under a lot of pressure in 2024. Lower interest rates could help boost sales and margins let's take a look at whirlpool and first of all let's talk about that dividend yield they offer a 7.2 percent dividend yield now guys we're going to get into the key concerns because the, the main thing is is the issue that's going on right now is it temporary or is it a broader issue with or a specific structural issue with whirlpool that's the question we're trying to answer today is whether or not to get out of whirlpool if you're in whirlpool or if it's okay, it's just a it's just a cyclical issue. All right, so four point or seven point two percent dividend yield, absolutely amazing dividend yield. That's super attractive for income seeking investors, and the company is well positioned, guys, to benefit from a lower interest rate environment. Housing market improvement is expected to drive discretionary spending on appliances. There's two risks that I see. High dividend yields may indicate potential dividend cuts, and uncertainty in the housing market raises concerns for Whirlpool's earnings and their margins. All right, let's look at the major concerns, though, for investors. There's three big ones, and number one is a housing market slowdown. Investors are worried about the impact of the ongoing housing market slowdown. Now, I think that there's a bullish and a bearish view when we're looking at this housing market slowdown. The bullish view is that lower interest rates are going to improve housing affordability, spurring appliance purchases. The bearish view, on the other hand, says despite rising mortgage rates, housing prices haven't fallen as expected, limiting demand. All right, so that's a big, that's number one key concern for investors is housing market slowdown. Second thing that people are concerned about is the declining sales and the margins. Whirlpool's North American major domestic appliance market is underperforming. EBIT margins have declined year over year. Whirlpool's management originally expected 10 to 11% EBIT margin by the end of this year, 2024, but performance has fallen short. Okay, so that's that's number two. We've got housing market slowdown, declining mar sales and margins. And the number three big issues that uh, the con investors are concerned about is the potential market share loss for Whirlpool. Whirlpool may be losing competitive position and market share. Competitor Bosch highlighted increased competitive pressure from Asian suppliers and market consolidation, posing a structural challenge for Whirlpool. And again, that brings us to the big issue that this video is supposed to address, and that is, is what's going on at Whirlpool? Is it a structural problem with Whirlpool, with a company, or is it just a temporary cyclical issue? Well, if you look at the argument of a structural concern, uh, there are declining margins, and those signal a long-term structural issue with Whirlpool. Bosch's commentary on the intensifying competition market shift adds to that concern. But then if we look over at the argument for it being a temporary issue, Whirlpool attributes margin pressure to a shift in demand. See, there's two types of demand. There's replacement demand and discretionary demand. Replacement demand is solid, but low margin. It's just replacing broken appliances. Discretionary demand is weak due to sluggish home sales, leading to lower sales of high margin premium products. Now guys, in a lower interest rate environment, discretionary demand could recover, boosting margin margins. And that's the argument for why it could be just a temporary issue. But let's bring in Home Depot because they have a perspective that should cheer up all Whirlpool investors. Home Depot's management, they just made a recent statement that support Whirlpool's claim of weak discretionary spending. Executive VP Billy Bastek noted softer engagement in larger discretionary projects such as kitchen and bath remodels due to financing challenges. Their CFO, Richard McPhail, confirmed pressure 
on large project categories, including appliances. And this indicates, guys, that weak discretionary spending is a broader issue, not just a Whirlpool-specific problem. So, what are the implications for you as a Whirlpool investor or potential Whirlpool investor? Home Depot's comments suggest Whirlpool's challenges are tied to broader economic conditions rather than structural issues. So as the housing market recovers, interest rates decline, Whirlpool sales and their margins should improve. While short-term risks remain, Whirlpool Guys does remain a viable option for income-focused investors due to its high dividend yield and its potential for recovery. Okay, so Whirlpool's earnings, their margins, they're currently under pressure, but there are signs that this is a temporary issue related to broader market conditions. So investors, y'all should weigh the risk of a dividend cut against the potential for a housing market recovery that could boost Whirlpool's performance in the long term. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, give it a big thumbs up, like the video, leave a comment down below, let me know what your opinion is of Whirlpool. And guys, subscribe for more videos like this, and I'll catch you again tomorrow with another video. Peace.